Those are the things my children kill me for. I bet. I can't wait for that. This is Art on the Airwaves with Cammie Davis on KSKQ 89.5 FM in Ashland, Oregon. This show is about art and the business of art. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about edgy art events to start out the show because uh, we are in full swing on preparing for it. And I've got some help this year. I have a sponsor, a sponsor which is Wayne Chang. Uh, I was really excited to have him on board because that allows me to hire some amazing artists to help me with the event. And I have um, Whitney Rolf, who is a um, young artist in the area. She's one of the event coordinators. Um, Christoph Sharp, who is the epitome of edgy art to me. He is an event coordinator. And then I have Martin Ball, who is, many of you who listen to KSKQ are going, ooh, that name is familiar. That's because he does locals only on Sundays from 2 to 4 on KSKQ. And then he's also an artist, a musician, an SOU professor. Um, I think there's more, but it just goes on and on. Um, so he is amazing. So excited as well this year because I have Jeff Kletzel as our music director, and uh, many of you know him in the area. He's got a great fan base. I just I, I got his CD, and I just keep playing it over and over and over. It's just such a good, um, it's a, such a great CD. Uh, the cool thing with him is that I'm doing a music art video with him soon. Um, it's to the song Come Back to Me. And um, it's going to be produced by Jez Klein. Um, my sister, Terry Harris, is going to be uh, the videographer in it. And then we're going to be shooting at a warehouse uh, that the Holly Theater has. And the fun thing is I get to paint the Jeff Kletzel instrument. So I hope that makes you curi curious enough to watch for the music art video because it's going to be a fun day filming that one. Um, and then I also have, we're going to have a chef helping out this year. We're going to have food as art this year. And we have a cinematographer, which is Blake Helmken. He's going to be um, part of the edgy crew this year as well. Um, hoping to have a phone call here in a few seconds um, for, um, from Phil Ortega from Life Art. Let me tell you while we're waiting for him to call in, let me tell you a little bit about Life Art. Um, it is a program for, I, I believe the story goes that um, he had seen a couple of kids, they were like spray painting um, one of the buildings, uh, I think it was for his work or something, and he had caught them in the act. Um, this was years ago. I'm not sure how long ago. So he went and talked to them, and he's like, hey, man, what are you doing? And they're like, well, my brother just died, and I'm just you know, trying to create some art for him. So this cool guy, Phil Ortega, had uh, set up this um, program called Life Art, and it's basically for at-risk kids. It's in Medford. And um, tonight, there's going to be a very cool event, which is where Wayne Ching, um, which is the sponsor for Edgy Art Events, well, he's giving them an award tonight as well. And that is um, Life Art is now located at Middle Middleford Alley in Medford, and that it's right in front of Middleful, Middleford Parking Garage, which is in downtown Medford. So that is tonight at 7 p.m. I'm definitely going to be there with my camera in tow, videotaping Wayne, uh, giving the award to Life Art, so I'm excited about that. Um, and so 7 p.m. tonight, Life Art Studio, Middleford Alley, and everybody Wayne Ching tonight. Actually, since I can't sing, I really wish I'd had uh, Darren mic'd up for that. He could sing. Could you sing that, Darren? Could you sing, like, everybody Wayne Ching tonight? Everybody Wayne Ching tonight. It's a lot better than I would do. <laughs> Not to put him on the spot or anything. Um, my musical guest today is Darren Wayne, and I didn't even know that I liked country music until I heard him sing, and now I'm a huge fan. Um, Darren, when I listen to your songs, they are so personal to me because, or they're personal to you, which as an artist, like that touches me. Uh, I love songs that are personal um, to artists. I love it when artists put themselves out in the world. Um, how, tell us about your songs. How do you write them? Uh, they just come to me. You know, it's like not really my songs. It's just like melody pops in my head. I just put words to it that I think belong to it. Do, do you, does the melody come to you first or is the song, because I know you write about songs that are um, part of your life. Do the, the words and something you're wanting to express come to you first or does the music come to you first? A lot first? of times the music pops in my head and I'll just start humming it, a melody, uh -huh. and then I'll to it. Sometimes I'll think of a concept, you know, it's like, hey, this would be, you know, a cool song. So. I'm trying to turn, yeah, he's like giggling because so, like, I'm trying to turn the video you know, camera like, towards him. <laughs> I'll think of something cute, you know, and, and then, uh, then usually a melody will come. I'll just kind of dinker on my guitar until a melody comes along mm -hmm. and, and fits, and then boom. I love it. Well, I love your music. Um, Darren and I did a music art video. It was called well, I called it Playing Hooky on a Sunny Day. What was the actual name of that song? 
Honky Tonk. Honky Tonk. Honky Tonk. I renamed it. <laughs> I renamed it everything and, and you everyone. Know, that happens a lot. You know what I mean? A lot of people, hey, play that light bulb song. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, play a hooky on a Sunday. So we did this music art video, which is really cool. Um, I posted it to the Art on the Airwaves um, website. So today's post, which of course is dated today, it's going to have information from our show. So it'll have um, the podcast of today's show, um, the video, because I am um, shooting this in a video as well for YouTube. All of that is going to be art on the on today's post from artontheairwaves.com. And then I also have a copy of the uh, video that Darren and I did together because you guys are going to enjoy it. It's so much fun. Um, so I'm going to have you play your first live song for us today if you're ready. Uh, what one are you going to play for us? Um, this song's been in my, my head all morning. It's a little Johnny Cash song I like to do. Um, and the uh, music video will be on my website too, DarrenWayne.com soon, as soon as I figure out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I get it. <laughs> I love the honesty. It's a, it's a great video. It's very creative. Yeah, it was so much fun this. to do. <laughs> Here's Darren Wayne. with Art on the Airwaves on KSKQ 89.5 FM in Ashland, Oregon. And I was even watching Canyon Webb, our tattoo artist, rocking away with uh, Darren Wayne. Hey, Darren, tell us a little bit about um, you've got Jackson County Fair coming up. Saturday, yeah. This next, Saturday. Not, not this Saturday, next Saturday. Next Saturday. Yeah, What's the date? 4.30 to 5.30. 25th? Uh, yeah. 
thirty. Yep, that's my slot. At Jackson County Fair. Um, so we have a caller. Let's see who it is. KSKQ, you're on the air with Cami Davis on Art on the Airwaves. Who am I talking with? Paige Dormier. How are you, Pageykins? <laughs> I'm great. So for those of you who don't know, which is probably most of you, except I talk about her all the time, um, on the air right now, we have my daughter, Paige Dormier, Dormier who is um, calling from Seattle today. Um, it's great to have you on the line, Paige. Um, I wanted to talk to you because, as you, as I told you, my guest today is Canyon Webb. Tell us about how you found Canyon Webb from Off the Map Tattoo, because you were coming down to visit me from Seattle, and you wanted a tattoo, and um, you found a tattoo parlor in Gratz Pass, which surprised me because I just thought you'd go to one in Seattle. So how did you find Off the Map Tattoo and then Canyon Webb? that you came down here for the tattoo and thought, oh, I'll just go ahead and swing by and see mom while I'm there. Right, oh, Can yeah. Canyon, oh, you brought her here. Oh, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so one of the things that I thought was interesting was that um, when you, before you were getting the tattoo, you talked to me. So you're, a, you know, a person who appreciates art. You have a mother who is an artist. You're getting a tattoo and you're like, hey, mom, I want you to draw a tattoo for me. And what I said was, you know, I, I don't, uh, skin is not my canvas, and I really just really think if you have a great tattoo artist that you should go to him or her and let them guide you through it. So, of course, you listened to me, which is like once in a lifetime, and, um, but you did. You went in, you talked to Canyon, and tell me how that went. Um, it was really cool. Honestly, I get kind of nervous um, going up to tattoo artists and showing them something that I want because... Um, I don't know, I'm not a professional, and I don't know what looks good on skin, so it's just kind of a little nerve-wracking for me personally. Um, with Canyon, he was, you know, really sweet and honest with me about um, my tattoo idea. He was um, explaining to me how, um, I was emphasizing how important detail was to me, and he was kind of explaining to me why a tattoo should be more simple and emphasize on certain things. And with my tattoo, he kind of, um, it seemed like the main focus was more like the shading than like the, I don't know how to explain it, but the details of the tattoo. And it's actually my favorite part of the tattoo is the shading. And every time that people come up to me um, to compliment me on my tattoo, they always say the shading is their favorite part. And, you know, for most people, they would think that that's the thing that would catch their eyes, so I just think that's really interesting and really shows um, his expertise in um, making tattoos. Yeah, absolutely. You found a good one with him. Um, you saw the tattoo that he gave me for, that I bought for myself for my 50th birthday when I when I came up. Um, Paige G, for those of you listening, she's 21. She's my youngest baby, which is which is why there's the Y on the end of her name. Her name is Paige, but the baby of the family always, everything, you know, you have the E on the end of everything. So uh, Paige G, I went to her University of Washington graduation in June, and you got to see the tattoo on my wrist. What did you think? Did Tanya, did Canyon do good? It was amazing. Uh, I mean, it is amazing. It's <laughs> yeah, all, right? yeah, exactly. It will be there. <laughs> yeah. um, it's really amazing. I really like how he was able to get a balance of um, not only his own style, um, but also your style. Because you are an artist and you wanted to make it something that was your own. And I think being an artist, it's really hard to make pieces of work that are um, incorporating other people styles because mm -hmm. as an artist usually they only really know how to you know perfect their own liking and their own style but I think Canyon is really good at um, taking his clients ideas and 
ideas or other people's artwork as inspiration and um, kind of making that something really unique. Like he's really good at um, incorporating other styles, including his own. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you. And when I had made the appointment, um, you had told me that his style had really changed. Like he was really focusing on um, a different area. So I was interested when I went in to find out what he came up with. Um, tell me what you think about the new style that, that you had. Because um, you follow him, um, you know, since then and kind of watch what he's doing with his tattoos. Tell me about the new style and what you think of it. I always think it's interesting when artists um, are kind of paving their way and um, aren't into new things and different styles. I've seen that with your work, with Jeff Robley's work, and also Tanya's work. I really like what he's been doing now. They're really complex pieces, or at least they seem really complex to me. Um, but they seem to be, like, emphasizing shapes and... Um, uh, it's like a geometric style. I mean, I'm not an artist, so I don't really know the exact words, mm -hmm. but that's kind of coming to my mind um, when I think of his stuff that he's been making now, and they're great. I am so wanting to get another <laughs> uh, Hey, maybe I'll get to... So hopefully he doesn't change styles before I come up there. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Maybe I'll get to see you then is what you're saying. I'll, I'll lure you down here with a tattoo. <laughs> Mommy will pay if you come down here to see me. <laughs> If I get five minutes of your time. Oh, Paige, that's great. If he gets any closer to me, I might not ever see you again. I know, right? Right? That's it. <laughs> we got to keep Canyon down here just so my daughter comes and visits me. Uh, I don't know if you heard who my other guest is, but um, I have country singer Darren Wayne playing live in the studio today. And I'm mentioning him to you because I know you follow all my shows. Uh, insert laughter here. Um, um, but on the last show, <laughs> yeah, right, I dedicated a song to you for your graduation. Um, I was looking at his CD, and there is a song called Page. So um, I, I played that on my last show for you, and, and of course I know you heard it. Um, but I also sent you a link to, the, yeah, I know, uh, a link to the music art video that I did with him. Um, it was pretty a cool video. Did you check it out? Have it, I watched all of your videos? Yeah, uh, she's 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> we know they're all laughing. We know. <laughs> that actually was probably one of my favorite videos that um, I've seen of yours. It was just really fun. I couldn't help but want to like dance with you and <laughs> Good. even though I'm horrible at doing artwork. Uh, and then also, I like that it was. It, I could tell that it was actually a live. Of his music, right? Yeah, no, he was he was sitting in my backyard playing that audio, which was pretty good for what it was, was simply my camera recording him, and it came out that good. That's because he has a great voice. Yeah, so I thought that was um, really cool too. So not only are we seeing your artwork in the movie, but we're also hearing his music actually happening. Um, and you know, well, we're watching, um, and then. You guys seem to have a pretty pretty good connection there. I don't know what that's all about, but uh, it definitely put a smile to my face. Oh god. Yeah, that's <laughs> called creative chemistry page. That that's just a just a creative moment. <laughs> oh anyway, on that note I'm gonna say goodbye to you, but I have one really important question for you. Okay? I was talking to you on the phone last night, and, you know, as a mommy, I noticed that you were getting really distracted, and I was like, oh, what, am I boring my 21-year-old again? And I was like, so why are you distracted, Paige? And I hear this rustling, and I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, uh, I'm eating potato chips. So here's a big question. What flavor were you eating? Because I could not capture your attention. Oh, <laughs> I actually don't. <laughs> it wasn't potato chips. It was, oh, uh, the truth comes out. What was it? She's like shy and embarrassed. She, you know what she is? She used to work at Whole Foods. She right now she's trying to think. Can I say Brussels sprouts and get away with it? <laughs> no, it was because I I started a new job in Seattle um, in Soto, and I, I'm not familiar with this area, and so yeah. I I forgot my lunch and so I went to like grocery outlet. Oh, the horror! <laughs>
Oh my God, you know what it is, is you've been buying and eating at Whole Foods for years and years while you work there. Now you're into the real stuff. <laughs> uh, Oh, I am just teasing you. I just know not to come between you and the potato chip bag, though. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> my favorite time of my day is becoming at 4 o'clock when you commute home from the Soto District and you call Mommy. That's my favorite time of the day. So I really love talking to you. Thank you so much for calling in, Paigey. Oh, thank you. I cannot wait to hear the recording on your website afterwards. Oh my gosh, she's, she's uh, by the way, she graduated in media and communications. Like, she has so much to teach me about marketing. Did you guys hear that? Uh, we're going to, I'm actually going to, uh, if she ever comes down, next time she comes down to get a tattoo from Canyon, I'm going to try to lure her into the studio so we can hear about her new job and stuff because it is really interesting. And I know you guys can uh, tell by listening to her, she is a great kid. So thanks so much for calling in. Go back to work and be a productive member of the working society like Mommy taught you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You're awesome. <laughs> I love you. Bye, honey. Bye. So this is Art on the Airwaves with Cami Davis on KSKQ 89.5 FM in Ashland, Oregon, and that was my youngest daughter, Paige, on the show. I want to mention my upcoming AOA shows, upcoming, that's uh, Art on the Airwaves shows, um, that I schedule for my radio show. And the really cool thing is I have it up now. This is just in the last two days, where if you go to artontheairwaves.com, on the homepage, there's a list of all of the upcoming shows. I've got, oh, my gosh, I have so many great guests coming up. Um, I am booked all the way out through December, um, and I've got a waiting list. So I've got a lot of cool people that are jumping up and saying, yeah, I want to be on your show. And um, I always look for people that I want to talk to and learn from um, as well as the listeners. So if there's anyone that you in particular would like to see on my show, shoot me an email. Email Cammy Davis Art at gmail.com, which is C A M M Y Davis Art at gmail.com. So, upcoming shows. On August 7th, I have Whitney Rolfe. Now, she's the one who does the AMP Art Music Passion uh, at Club 66. And this is going to be their sixth one that they've done. It's on August 15th. It is going to be the first edgy art event this year. And um, so she's going to be on my show on August 7th talking about that. And then our musical guests are Old Mountain Dew. And I love me some Old Mountain Dew. They are so much fun. And they're going to be live in the studio. And, of course, I'll be camcording it at the same time. So that's going to be a really fun show because they just get things you know like you bounce when they sing it's really cool and then on August 21st I'm going to have Randy McKay from the Holly Theater he's going to be talking about the upcoming Jim Belushi concert benefiting the Holly so um, you guys of course know Jim Belushi so his new show called Bil Building Belushi uh, just aired this week on the DIY um, network channel and um, the third show, so I think that's about a week and a half from today, is the one that he shot at the Holly Theater. So that's going to be really cool. And then he's doing a benefit um, to benefit the Holly Theater. And Ryan, Randy will be talking about that. Um, that's on August 21st. And my musical guests are the Seance. And then um, check, check listings um, that I mentioned, artontheairwaves.com on the homepage for um, dates for other guests. I'm going to have Jeff Kletzel on. Uh, we should have our video, our music art video shot by then, so we'll, we'll be able to talk about that because I think that's going to be a, a really fun uh, filming day for at least one of us. That would be me that's throwing the paint on him. Um, and then I also have upcoming guest David Humphreys, who is from the Oregon Center of the Arts at SOU. He is the director of um, that, and I went and met with him last week, and it's so interesting, um, the changes to the um, different um, cultural art programs that they have at, the, at SOU. So we're going to talk to him. Um, I'm going to have Ruthie and Jack from SBDC, which is the Small Business Development Center in Medford. They're going to come on later in the year. Uh, really excited about them because I do um, have Ruthie as my business counselor there, and she's helped me so much with my art business. I want to bring them on to talk about uh, resources that are available for artists and entrepreneurs who are listening. And then I'm um, also going to mention uh, Josh Gross from the Rogue Valley Messenger and Wendy King from Vibes. Uh, they're going to be on. Uh, Wendy King actually just did an article about me. I don't think it's out yet. It's in their next issue. I'm not sure when it hits the stands. I'll be doing posts about that. Uh, but they're going to be on later in the year as well, and they're going to be talking about um, things that concern artists, musicians, entrepreneurs who are trying to to promote themselves, you know, how do you get an article written about you? 
um, how does what's the difference between ads and articles and stuff like that so that's going to be a great show as well again art on the airwaves.com for all of those so I've been talking for a while and I really just want to get to my guests because I'm so excited uh, both of my guests I'm going to get to Canyon Webb right now though so Canyon Webb is a tattoo artist from off the map tattoo in Grants Pass and I'm going to turn his mic on welcome to the show Canyon <laughs> it's so great to have you. I know you were trying to get here. You've got a, a, a new baby, and the plan was to have the baby and the wife playing in Lithia Park <laughs> while you were here. Yeah, how, how was your I'm morning, still Canyon? Go, <laughs> I still go to plan. Yeah. I know, right? So, yeah, so I'm here alone, and that's okay. And uh, next time, you know, we'll post you know, we'll have all of you. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm gonna. Ha I'm definitely gonna have to have back just so I can see the baby, of course. Yeah. But no, actually, you know what I'll do is I'll have you back yeah. so I can get Paigey here. <laughs> Canyon's in the studio, Paige. <laughs> that was really awesome of her, and it really makes it worthwhile for what we do because it is a it's a crazy kind of a job. And yeah. You don't know how you affect people every once in a while, and it's easy to get treated, and yeah, and that you know that makes it all worth it. So that was great. Yeah, that was cool. I know she was a little, you know what, she was reticent to call in because she was like, gosh, she's going to think I'm stalking him. And I was like, Paigey, you don't even know as an artist what it means when somebody compliments you and appreciates sure. your work. Sure. I was no, like, please call awesome. in. No, and you, and you, you know, it, it's awesome because I made a difference in the way she looks at tattoos. And that's, that's really what I try to do when people come in. That was a, that was worthwhile right there because she, she's now not so fixated and enamored with the details. She's looking for something clean and timeless and that you know and that's hard to get people to see um but that was really cool yeah that yeah. makes it worthwhile yeah. yeah that was actually that's one that, well actually let's start with your background and then i'll get to my questions because i have a, a question um that segues off of that but um tell us a little bit about your background like what is it that got you into tattooing because i know you're an amazing artist as well what got you into tattooing what's your background well you know i, I grew up with comic books oh. and comic books they changed my life, the way things were drawn, and uh, I also had this grandmother that was a kindergarten teacher, and uh, she was just unrelentingly positive about everything I did. So I really, uh, you know, I never did anything to do it well. It was, it was just, just expressing myself as, as positive. And, uh, what an and, amazing gift! And from I still, her. you know, tell her thank you for that. And, uh, so that's a huge, that's a huge part of, you know, what fueled me, and then part of it is expression and. I, I grew up liking it, and it was kind of bad and neat and different and changed yourself, and I thought that was a really interesting thing. But I didn't take it serious, and I didn't think it was a, you know, a real job. Right, um, right, yeah, so, so many of us, yes. So you pick real jobs up until you say, you know, this isn't fulfilling enough. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I should do the thing that I want to do instead of all the things I think I should do. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, if you love it, then you do great with it. Absolutely, and you're st still really young. When did you, whereas I waited, I'm 50 now, and it's been about five or six years that I've had my business, so I waited till you know, midlife to where I finally got brave enough to set aside that real, or day job, as Darren Wayne would call it, and actually do what I was passionate about. Um, but you're still pretty young. When did you become a tattoo artist? When did you make that change? It's yeah. been about eight years. Good and, for you. Um, and that's still kind of, I felt late, and it does feel like this race. Oh, really? You do feel like, well, the odds are now stacked. There's a lot of talented people who are really young, and mm -hmm. and it's easier to get your stuff out there. And I think that's in all mediums, and uh, so it does feel yeah, like a race sometimes. Yeah. But it's not. You know, you just gotta. If, if you're interesting and, and you have a good message, then things usually work out great, and uh, it's not about the numbers at that point. No. Well, you've definitely uh, taken some great steps because when um, Paigey was researching and came up with the off the map tattoo, and she showed me that. Uh, information about Jeff Gogway. Isn't he like one of the top five in the nation <clears throat> or something? Yeah, I don't know how we can rank it, but he is maybe the most um, sought after mm -hmm. uh, in America, and that's risky for me to say because mm -hmm. um, his stuff's on toast. But, but he is, and he was in my eyes. That's mm -hmm. the reason why I'm up here, just yeah. to work with him. He's so you moved here? I moved here to work with him, and, and uh, he, he played a bit of a mentor role. Um, I listened to a lot of stuff he had to say and uh, it worked out great it mm -hmm. still is working and i apply a lot of that to, to life and to my heart but yeah he's, he's amazing every day he is you know 100 percent, and that's really hard to find oh, so yeah. it's uh, it's a constant comparison every day where you know, 
you know you're not going to be like him, but it is really awesome to be around him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so how long have you worked at Off and Up Tattoo? Um, almost four years. Four years yeah. now. So one of the things that I found intriguing is that you got you seem to like travel a lot and stuff. How does the tattoo world work? I mean, what is it that you're doing? Well, I, I guess you, you know what's great is we're our own bosses, and I think yeah. that's what you're starting to see is these uh, young entrepreneurial kind of people who take their own brand and make all their own little things, and they and they travel mm -hmm. and. So there is this golden age of tattooing um, in our little bubble, which is growing. Um, there's a lot of things going on. Yeah. And one of the amazing things is you get to go travel and, and work with amazing people, people you admire, learn, and uh, it's great. Yeah. yeah. It's a major benefit. It's a major benefit. See, that's really cool. And we're, and we're all about that here on Art on the Airwaves is the, the business side of the art. We're going to talk about that um, a little bit. A little bit more just a, a little while later in the show um, but I wanted to ask you a little bit about people wanting tattoos so I was sitting in my I was I wonder if I can turn that down that phone's ringing now um, sorry caller uh, whoever called just call back when a song is playing or after my show it too I'm seriously sorry but um, anyway there's just one person here and that is me controlling all the little the little things that make me nervous, like phones and buttons and stuff like that. Um, okay, so back with Kenyon Webb. Um, I wanted to ask you about, I was in my um, dental hygienist chair, and she sees my beautiful tattoo, and everyone has been noticing it and commenting on it, by the way. Um, and so she starts talking to me um, about, like, she has a certain tattoo that she wants, and she's talking to me about placement on her body. And I said, well, you know, I really think that you should... Um, oh, that phone is so distracting. Um, I really think you should find a great tattoo artist, of course I suggested you, and go and talk to them about the placement of it. So what are some of the things that people who are considering getting a tattoo, what type of tips do you have for them? Like placement or you know what they're choosing to put on their body, like what are some suggestions and tips? Well, I think their message is a big one. Um, you know, the style that they're wanting is a big one. You know, the internet now kind of gives you a lot of options, and that sometimes makes their options you know, crazy. They want to, oh, they like want so to, many choices? Right. They want to combine yeah. a lot of different things, <laughs> and then they don't consider the physics behind, you know, it being this moving body part. It's yeah. a perfect art. You're creating little explosions of ink, and there's blood, and it isn't, it isn't perfect. And um, so you have to kind of assess their expectations versus mm -hmm. the limitations. And that is the major spiel I've kind of come up with when I talk to people. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone has an expectation and then a limitation on top of it. And rarely they meet um, at that yeah. same level. Uh, so that is a, is a big one. Um, knowing what to expect, that really helps drive your artist toward the right goal, the right area. Yeah. And then uh, even if they're not able to do it, they're able to um, tell you about someone who can do what you're asking for. And I think that's the big thing. You know? If they're yeah. clear, then I can make a clear tattoo. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes sense. No, I thought that side of when I went in to get my tattoo, I thought it was so interesting because um, you were very organized. You definitely had a structure to how you went about things. Um, you met with me, and um, I felt bad as an artist that I had so many. Li I had three limitations for Canyon. I had I had that it's on my wrist, which is kind of part of my brand because I'm always sticking myself in front of the camera and video. Um, so that meant it had to include my art. Um, I didn't want it too big. And because I'm 50, I don't know, just my brain, I just didn't feel like I wanted it all over my arm. Um, but I wanted to make an impact. And then the other limitation was I had a little peace sign. Mm -hmm. So here I give you all these limitations, right. and I'm like apologizing over. I'm so sorry, Kenny, you're an artist. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm so normal. sorry. It's super normal nowadays. <laughs> <I know. laughs> but it's okay. Yeah. yeah. But you were able to take it and come up. So so I met with him once, and then I came back the morning of the tattoo, which was my 50th birthday. And I was, yeah, thinking, was, awesome. I was thinking, oh, my God, what if this goes bad? Sure, like, what if I don't course. like the design, and I'm going to hurt Canyon's feelings, and... It's my birthday. I'm, it's just going to be like sucking, you know. Sure. But I went in, and you had two different designs. I love both of them. Two. Yeah, one was a little different than the other, just a little bit. Um, but I tried to work out as many of the issues that I thought you might have. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of the thing. you got to find out what they might have an issue with and yeah. really deconstruct and deconstruct this drawing over and over. And, uh, and that's, you know, those were the two I felt best with, and I really couldn't decide between. But yeah, overall, we have the, the right one. 
I really think we did too. The other one I was like initially, I think it a little more drawn towards, but then I, I grabbed this one really quickly. The, the biggest difference I remember is that there were like polka dots on the end of the other one that made it look a little more henna-like. Sure. And I've yeah. had a few people say, oh, it kind of looks like a henna. Now I'm thinking of the henna I've gotten, and this looks, this is so beautiful. Well, it, is, <laughs> it is influenced by kind of Indian style uh -huh. design, maybe yeah. textures and fine tuning. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's good. You can, I mean, and what are, what, is they, what are they influenced by? You yeah. Know? So yeah. you can go down to the root. Yeah. I don't know if it's influenced by probably the same. One of the things, one of the things that I loved was that even when you were talking to me beforehand, and you were talking about it being a moving piece of art, like a fan, like, like you wanted it, like in my videos where um, people would see different angles of it and stuff, and you were pointing somebody like across the street that was walking, and you were like, you know, if they had a tattoo, just to see like a little piece of it, like while they're walking, and that just uh, being a visual person that really appealed to me. Yeah. And you nail that. Like when I'm taking pictures of myself, like I'll notice I can turn it different ways in the pictures. It looks really cool. Awesome. You did that's good. Totally awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big part of it. Is how does it move? How does yeah. it how does it live? How does how does the viewer view it? And uh, if you can give it some interesting things, then it's gonna turn. It's gonna last longer. Yeah. And with that is gonna last longer for you to look at. Yeah, you don't end up getting bored with it. Tell us a little bit about your newer style that Paigey was talking about. Oh, I guess I'm trying to get back to the root of things. I think mm -hmm. I was really focused on what makes things look realistic. How do I do this just exactly like this? Mm -hmm. And that's a very common thing when you're um, starting out and you're young. I think we do that across the board. But, you know, all of a sudden you achieve that and it's about a 10 minute buzz and you're looking What's my message? How do I use this to my advantage? So mm -hmm. I'm trying to get things more timeless. I'm trying to look at things that are simple, mm -hmm. not so much detailed. Um, and it's funny because she said my stuff looks very detailed and people say that, but to me it's actually cleaner because I'm making more focused choices on a positive and negative contrasting relationship with the time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not trying to get all the tricks, yeah. all the highlights and shadows and relying on line weight and texture mm -hmm. and contrast. It's more impactful. That's that's what I would it's say. Stronger. Yeah. yeah, your designs are more even more impactful than they used to be. Um, I was um, browsing through your website. So your website is canyonweb.com, mm -hmm. your own, and then of course there's off the map. Off the map tattoo.com, and uh, it's it's one of the largest uh, tattoo um, websites in the world. We have three shops: one in Italy and one in Massachusetts. It's amazing. It's an amazing shop. We have over 100 guest artists a year in all three shops. And so we bring, um, you know, international artists to the area, which is great. Wow, that is really cool. Yeah, I knew you guys had guest artists. So not only do you guys travel elsewhere, but you have guest artists that come yeah, in as yeah. well. And that's what we're known for. Is a really pretty cool. consistent amount of guest artists. Now, how do people, if they want to, like, if they want to get a tattoo with a guest artist, how do you know who's coming and can you get the in to see great. them? We have about a year's worth of people out oh. um, you can really plan and then you know a lot of the artists are different they do their own consultations or we'll have us book for them but mm -hmm. it's just reaching out you know the website is extremely easy and the owners of the owners of our of our shop are actually website designers mm -hmm. um, so man, we have this amazing database yeah. at tattoonow.com too so yeah we're at the vortex of what's important in tattooing and really uh, trying to get people that um, are doing a great job around the world into our environment yeah, that's very cool. Well, we're going to go to another song um, by Darren Wayne. Um, Darren, let's. I want to talk to you just for a second, make sure that I um, get your websites and stuff out there. I know that when I was uh, looking for information on the show and I wanted to see when you were playing at the Jackson County Fair, um, I just ended up Googling Jackson County Fair, and it was at theexpo.com is where people can find that information. Cool, thanks. Correct. Oh, you're like, oh, th thank you for that information, Cammy. You know more than I do. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, and one of the cool things when I was there is um, that I know that what I like about our arts community is how we all support each other. And I noticed that um, there are a lot of local musicians on there. There was um, also playing when you're at the fair is um, the Rogue Suspects. They were on my show pretty recently. Um, Fallen Theory, they're going to be on my show on November 20th. And then I saw that um, Living on Dreams 
who I need to have on my show. I love Lisa Wyerty's voice, so I've got to email Lisa and get her on the show. So I noticed there were a lot of local musicians as well. So you guys really support each other, don't you? We try to, yeah. So, yeah, I'm playing with Frankie Hernandez, who I've done open mics with for a long time, and and Gene Burnett out there. He's just a kick-ass songwriter. Just very talented. He plays with the National Theater with Chance to Sing. Very cool. And what um, your own website is DarrenWayne.com, correct? Yeah, Darren Wayne. D-A-R-R-I-N. Wayne.com. Okay. And we're going to have that video of uh, the page he was talking about, uh, about um, playing hooky on a sunny day. We're going to have that up there pretty soon. But um, what song are you going to play for us this time? Um, this, this song is an... Uh, is uh, called Broad Highway. It's on my in the new CD I'm working on with a friend of mine named Luke, and um, it's funny because I've never done a project where I wrote for the project. I've always wrote the songs and then put them on a CD. Uh -huh. This one I I came up with the project and then I wrote these songs to fit this project. And this was the last one I couldn't. It, I was hung up on it. I had a number that you know a certain number of songs I wanted, and I I opened up a book and. There it was on the bottom. I just said, okay, I'm just going to open up a book. And there it was, the answer. Yeah. And the paragraph on the page. So oh, my God. I'm uh, so, And this is the last one. Does that mean we're going to have some new Darren Wynn music soon? Hopefully by Christmas. Oh, you're coming back on the show then because I can't wait. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so let's do it. This is Darren Wynn live.
Bible, baby. Darren Wayne, anytime you want to sing in my ear, you just let me know. This is Cami Davis with Art on the Airwaves on KSKQ 89.5 FM in Ashland, Oregon. And we are back on the air. That was Darren Wayne. DarrenWayne.com is where you can find his music. D-A-R-R-I-N Wayne.com. And we're back in the studio with Canyon Webb. Um, from Off the Map Tattoo in Grants Pass. Um, Canyon, I want to chat with you a little bit about the business side of tattooing. Okay. So I found, oh, it would help if I turn your microphone on. That, that's my biggest blunder always, by the way. Oh, trying to do too many things at once, I swear. I'm not a good multitasker, but anyway. Um, so Canyon, where we are now, back on the air with you. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the business side, because one of the things that I found interesting when I was getting my, to my tattoo is I was sitting in your chair um, going through some paint. Actually, I was luxuriously laying on a bench with a pillow underneath my head, thinking the only thing missing here is a margarita. <laughs> and the pain in my wrist is, uh, you know, whatever. But, um, no, I thought it was really interesting that you were talking a little bit about, I was, I was grilling you basically about the business side of tattooing. I thought it was interesting because you are an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You have your own station and stuff yeah. at Off The Map. So, so tell the listeners how that works. How do you create a business as a tattoo artist? Well, we have to be motivated so yeah. motivated you know and it's easy to, to kind of fall back as an artist so you know you have an amount of money for your company that you kind of need to make and um, you have a space that you're renting essentially and uh, no one's going to tell you when to come in no one's going to mm -hmm. tell you how to book or you know, how to make your business cards or how to do your piece for your publicity and somehow you got to do that yeah and you have the easiest ways to do it then and uh, but you know how do you keep yeah. How do you get them to get their cards excited about the stuff yeah. that you do? Um, so yeah, you have to be so motivated. I feel like you have to know what you want. Some people just want to be great in their town, and some people want to do you know, be great in the world. Yeah. And you can't really fool yourself with that. So yeah, if you, if you want something local, then you got to push for something local. Yeah. You don't want to push harder. I love that you're saying that because that, that's one of the things that I say um, and I've done a, a couple different videos that include this type of thing is that um, you really have to know what you want. Yeah. Like that's the most important thing. Yeah, Jeff told me that. And man, it was, it was one of the first little seeds he planted in my head because no one had said that really. They either kind of contradicted everything they said by telling me to work hard and then they didn't or, <laughs> or they didn't feel like I couldn't work hard, you know, because they couldn't. So for someone to say, well, what, is that what you want? And then for me to go, yeah, then you just go get it. And yeah. It's proof. And, uh, you know, okay. Yeah. It's easy. It's yeah. easier that way. Yeah. For sure. And the drive is part of it because um, I, it, at this point, I've been in town four years. I uh, moved here from Seattle, uh, working hard at my art business. And it's interesting how many different people I've connected with and tried to bring in in different ways or work with and stuff. And it's the people that are driven, the people that um, do what they say they're going to do and they have the drive to make things happen. They're the people that really get far, if those are their goals. And there's sure. a lot of people that don't want to do much. Sure. It, uh, you know, and they just might their not goals be are different. famous and they, yeah. might not, you know, they might not have a ton of money, but that's maybe not what they want. Maybe mm -hmm. they're just working hard at what they love. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta know what you want. Being a tattooer, and as there's a lot of us now, and so now more than ever, you, you better have your stuff together. Yeah, you absolutely. Um, I think the um, the branding and the promotional side of it are so interesting as well. Um, uh, let's talk about that a little bit because it was very eager to eager. <laughs> easy. <laughs> it was very easy to Google you mm -hmm. and come up with a whole bunch of tattoos and promotions and stuff. How mm -hmm. do you promote yourself and how does that play into your business? Well, I have a great business that I work for that we work really hard at, at, at fueling that fire, which means you got to put more stuff on the internet. You got to have a blog. You mm -hmm. got to have more photos on there every day. Yeah. And so it's, it's you got to basically till this garden to get some good growth yeah. out of the internet. And the little random things are good, but yeah, you need a steady amount of stuff. Yeah. And it is, it's everything's watered down so so you have to be consistent because you know, no one's gonna see it. Right. There's too much of it. Social media is great. All that stuff is really great. Uh, but you know, for me as a tattooer it's it's doing something eye catching on the street mm -hmm. and you know, someone who's like minded comes up and asks, Where did you get that? Mm -hmm. That's the big one. That's a great one. Yeah. 
That's really cool. One of the things um, I like working with you guys and um, and other people that do this is that if I do a post and I tag you guys, is that you like it or you make a comment or whatever. I think that's as art as a, an arts community. That's why one way that all of us can help each other. Uh, Darren is really good at this too. Whenever I um, post something with his name on it, um, is that he will like it or make a comment. Um, so that's something for listeners who are artists or entrepreneurs to remember. Uh, if you use social media to help build your brand and your business, is to take the time to comment on other artists' um, work uh, and make comments and you know the, the back and forth, the networking. We would just help each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you want to be in the scenery, you better be in the scene. Yeah, you, know, <laughs> you better be around. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, I totally agree with that. I can't believe how fast this um, this show has gone. They always go fast, but I think this was even more so than usual. Um, let's kind of wrap it up a little bit, talking about your future, Canyon. What do you plan on? What's your future look like? <laughs> that was a wide open question. Oh my god! Well, I'm just trying to stay consistent. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, having a five month old, it's that's all I really Wait, consistent now. five months old? I, I, I don't know impossible. how that works, right? Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's trying to have something solid yeah. and work on that solid thing and uh, not get too distracted by a bunch of other things. Yeah, um, stay focused yeah, stay on what your focused. main goal is. Right. Yeah, I write goals better. each year, that's why. That's yeah, awesome. absolutely. That really makes things work. Yeah. You know, you know what you're doing at that point. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, very cool. You know what I haven't uh, said yet, and I want to show this on the video, is that Canyon, when he walked in today, he brought me. He's an amazing 2D painter as well. I don't know how you could do skin and canvas as well, because to me they're so different, like my brain. Same, I know. Same principles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you hold that up for our, because this will be on video on <laughs> YouTube. Check this out. Look how gorgeous that is. That's going to be on my wall. I'll be snapping pictures of it, posting it. I was like, I, I couldn't... Painting. And yeah, you know, it's really gessoed underneath, so there's some really nice texture, which it's, I love in painting. I love texture too. Oh my god. No, I was speechless. I, I had to try to pull it together to go on the air because I was just mm -hmm. speechless when he when you handed that to me. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. That really Thanks touched me. Me. Thank you so much for driving all the way from Grants Pass. Sure. So remember canyonweb.com or off the map tattoo.com. Awesome. Correct? Yeah. And then um, Darren, thank you so much for coming in and playing live in the studio. So people are gonna want to go and watch you. Saturday? Saturday, yeah, at the fair. July 25th. Night, uh, um, oh, shoot. I'm a brain. <laughs> that's okay. That's I did okay. want to say that yeah, um, go ahead. I gave my daughter one of your cards with the necklace combo for her, <laughs> for her 13th birthday. Yeah, yeah. And she just loved it. Did so, she wear it? Yeah. Okay. So you're amazing. <laughs> and thank you awesome. for, you know, trying, doing what you're doing, incorporating and and letting me have an opportunity to come on with the show and speak to all of you. Yeah, definitely. Anytime you want to come on the show, Darren, I love I love playing with artists who who play along with me. So you guys have been great to to come in and and play along with art on the airwaves. <laughs> um, so thank you to everyone for listening. Um, I'm going to. Send you out with a song on Darren CD. I wish I could have you do another live one, but the oh, next DJ is good. coming in. Um, so th the reason I chose this song is that I was recently listening to Darren at Oberon's Tavern, and there was some woman out in the audience. All the women in the audience are screaming, basically. I don't know if you guys have seen a picture of him. Watch the video. You'll get it. All the women in the audience are screaming, and this one, <laughs> he's blushing. <laughs> Come, yeah, I know. Oh, my God. Did the camera not get I thought the camera was on, and that was adorable. He just like put his little cowboy hat over his face. Um, but this this woman was like screaming out, play this, play this. And Darren's like, I don't know that song. And she's like, play it, play it anyway. So I tried to help the situation. And if Paige, my daughter's listening to this, she's rolling her eyes because she knows how my help works. Is I'm like, play sober because that's a song of his that I love. And he's shaking his head no at me. And I'm like, I don't understand. Why is he not doing what I asked? Like, I just somehow expect everyone to jump in and do what I want. So afterwards, um, he's walking to my, me to my car, and he says, you know, and I said, I was like, why do you play Sober for me? I love that song. And he said, well, it's a real downer when you're in a bar, and I start playing Sober. And I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, I didn't, back, you yeah. wouldn't get <laughs> Now, see, me, I would have kept drinking because that's not my issue. But uh, it, it doesn't even affect me that way. When I hear it, it's a personal song that Darren wrote about his life. And, and I just respond to it so well. But I love all, all the songs on your CD. So I'm going to um, send out my radio show with a song, Sober, because you know what? 
it's my show and I'll do what I want to. Just I gotta learn to sing when I throw out these little. The queen. Yeah, you see, I either need to have you sitting in the the radio station with me and singing these little blips that I throw out because I can't sing. But I throw my it's my show and I'll do what I want to. So anyway, thank you for listening, uh, everyone. Tune in on first and third Fridays from one to two or anytime on iTunes or SoundCloud. You just search Cami Davis and you can listen to all the podcasts. Um, you can also watch the show today on YouTube. Again, you search Cami Davis. The easiest way to find all of those links is that you go to artontheairwaves.com and all of the links are on there. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate Thank having you. you guys on. Thank you. This is Sober by Darren Wayne.